Okay, this is Jared Williamson, and I have been out of making videos for quite a while because I had some serious personal issues to deal with. In large part, uh, my father uh, had dementia for a while, and then he passed away from dementia. Then uh, I had to deal with the aftermath of that. And I'm kind of getting back into the swing of things, and I was going to do some gardening videos. And I'm not quite sure what I'm going to make my YouTube videos on, but uh, I'm just doing this as an outlet. We'll see what happens. Anyway, this one's called The Two Seals of God. And the purpose of this is um, a while back, I did a video, clickbaity title, titled um the mark of the beast overlooked truths and i got a whopping 63 views and um you know yeah i know it was clickbaity and i have this thing it implies uh people getting the jab and uh people you know kind of implying certain things about the mark of the beast and i went through it and i actually I actually did a sensible, level-headed, biblical discussion of the mark of the beast, and I contrasted that with the biblical evidence of the mark of the beast versus the seal of God. And uh, in the end times, there's two groups of people, those who get the mark of the beast versus those who get the seal of God. There's only two groups. And um, many evangelicals, understandably um, and correctly point out that the Holy Spirit is the seal of God. And the Holy Spirit um, happens when the believer uh, begins to believe. And, but they don't, you know, they, they disagree with Adventists regarding what the seal of God is. Uh, because they're not understanding, they're Adventists and typical evangelicals are not on the same page on this, because they're actually talking about two different things, okay? Um, they're both correct, okay? But they're just talking about two different seals of God is what it is. And so I want to, they're both right, okay? They're both correct, and I want to point out um, how they're both right. And both can settle down and and stop being upset with each other and actually kind of breathe a sigh of relief going, oh, my friend over there is not wrong and I have something I can learn from them, you know, instead of being upset. So I just wanted to show this. Um, so you can go to the prepared Adventist and you could look at this. And I'd appreciate it if you shared it with people. I would I appreciate um, constructive feedback. Um, negative, destructive feedback doesn't help me at all. Okay, I don't find it helpful. And if you're in the mood for doing that, you know, go do that with somebody else. Let's go with um, the correct evangelical um, point of view on the seal of the Holy Spirit. And um, I need to wear my glasses, which is gonna have a glare here a little bit. I'm trying to avoid the glare from the light. And I put three different versions of the same um, passage from Ephesians chapter one, verses 13 and 14. I have the New King James, in him you also trusted if you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, the good news of your salvation, in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchase, purchase possession to the praise of his glory. So the Holy Spirit, by the way, for the anti-Trinitarians out there, right, the Holy Spirit is referred to as who referred to with personal pronouns, okay? So for those of you who say that you're a Seventh-day Adventist and you're an anti-Trinitarian, um, you're wrong. Sorry, okay? 
<laughs> uh, that's in the New King James Version. The NIV says, when you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance. The NA NASB, you can pause it and take a look at it here. Something I want to point out uh, up over here, the purpose of a seal at, at these times was a seal was a stamp that was used to authenticate a document. This document is authentic. It is um, owned by the owner or it was used to prevent interference with a package or an envelope so somebody could not open it and mess around with the contents without it being discovered that it was messed around with. So um, the purpose of this, when the, when the believer believed the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit in the believer's life was a guarantee, was a down payment of their promised um, salvation, okay? And their uh, promised um, upcoming redemption. And then good people will debate one way or another whether that means once saved, always saved, or or does that not mean once saved, always saved? I'm not going to get into that discussion here. What everybody does agree upon is the presence of the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, the presence of the person, uh, indicates that um, it's a down payment. It's it it, it is. Um, proof to the believer that you that God considers you his the next thing I want to point out says here when you were included in Christ and also you were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth the gospel the good news of salvation when you believed I put it in red you were marked in him with a seal the promised Holy Spirit who meaning the Holy Spirit who personal pronoun is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Ephesians 1, 13 through 14, NIV. The seal is individual, right? It's to the individual, individual believer. Okay. It occurs throughout the Christian era because it's not just a New Testament thing that happened only during the apostles' time. There are, you know, believers from, you know, the apostles' time all the way through the centuries up until now, up until Jesus comes, right? So it happens throughout the Christian era, past 2,000 some odd years, okay? And its purpose is to provide assurance of belonging to Christ. It's the guarantee of our inheritance. So we belong to Jesus, and it's, you know, you're going to be redeemed. Okay? So it's individual. It occurs throughout the Christian era to each believer over time, over the millennia. And it's, so it's individual, occurs throughout time. And its purpose is to assure the individual that, you know, you belong to Christ and you're going to be saved. The nature of the end time seal, Revelation 7 and 9. Okay, and I think this is from the New King James. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth and the sea or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. So it's a seal placed on the forehead. And that's Revelation 7, 2 and 3. And then out of the smoke locusts came upon the earth, and to them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. And they were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. Okay? So this is a seal on the forehead. And it's more corporate in the sense of you know, it's to all the believers. 
and it occurs at a point in time, i.e. during the events of verses 2 and 3, or Revelation 9, verses 3 and 4, whenever this angel comes out and starts going around stamping them, or whatever he does, to put the mark on their foreheads. I don't think it's a literal stamp on the forehead, but whatever form it takes, it occurs at a point in time. It's not throughout the centuries, right? This is during the events of Revelation 7 and 9, okay? So it occurs at a point in time, and it has a different purpose. It's to protect the recipients from the upcoming harm that's going to happen to everybody that does not have the seal. So it's not individual like the seal of the Holy Spirit. It's not taking place over the centuries to each individual person. It's happening at a point in time during the end times. And it's not a promise or down payment that you belong to God and you're going to be saved. It has a different purpose. It's to protect you in the midst of the impending destruction. Okay. So it's different in audience, different in recipients, different in time, different in purpose. Right. And it comes from different, it, it echoes from Ezekiel 9. In Ezekiel 9, it says, Now the glory of God had gone up from the cherub where it had been in the threshold of the temple. And he called to the man clothed in linen who had the writer's inkhorn in his side. And the Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city, throughout the midst of Jerusalem. Put a mark on the forehead of the men who sigh and cry over all the abominations that are done within it. There's a point in time where God's going through Jerusalem and, and, and uh, Israel is... Um, you know, apostatizing from God. And there's a small group that don't apostatize. And this group that does not apostatize, God has an angel that puts a mark on the forehead. These are the ones who stay obedient to God and to God's commands. And he says, put a mark on their foreheads of the men who cry and don't, right? And you see over here in Revelation 7, something very similar says, um, you know, put a mark put a mark on their foreheads seal on their foreheads uh ezekiel 9 3 through uh here go after um to the others he said in my hearing go after him through the city and kill do not let your eyes spare nor have pity utterly slay old and young men maidens and little children and women that sounds harsh but do not come near anyone on whom is the mark the mark of god and begin at my sanctuary so the judgment starts at the sanctuary and goes out from there. And so they begin, right? But don't slay those that have the mark of God or the seal of God. And then it says here, this is very similar, right? Um, it echoes from there in Revelation 9, 3 and 4. So it's a clear echo, clear allusion to the same thing. Okay. In Ezekiel 9, God, um, it's the only, only place I know of in the Old Testament, where God has an angel or whatever, go put mark on the forehead that protects the faithful who obey the commandments and don't apostatize and don't commit abomination and spiritual adultery. And God levies judgment first against his professed believers. And then the ones who are spared are the ones who have this mark on their forehead. And over here in Revelation, the same thing happens. Okay. Those who have this mark on their forehead, whether it's a visible mark or invisible mark, doesn't say. I think it's invisible. Okay, but whatever. Okay, who receives this end times mark? When we look at Ezekiel 9, we kind of have an idea, right? This is not in um, Revelation 7 and 9. But later we see the ones who were saved. And the, the ones who were saved are the ones who in Revelation 12, 14, and Revelation 22 are the ones who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. 
those who keep the commandments of God and keep the faith of Jesus or have the faith of Jesus. And in Revelation 22, or Revelation 12, I'll read it. And the dragon was enraged with the woman and went to make war with the rest of her offspring and who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. Here is the, that's Revelation 12, 17. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. <clears throat> that's Revelation 14. Revelation 22, blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. Okay, And that, that they don't earn their salvation by keeping the commandments. Rather, because of their faith, it's just like in Ezekiel 9, right? Because they love God, they do what God asked them to do. And they stay faithful to God and do what God asked them to do. This is the same thing here, right? It revolves around those who keep the commandments of God as a result of their salvation. Okay, as a result, not as a cause, not as a maintenance of their salvation either. Okay, it's not... Um, you know, saved by grace and kept by works. That's the uh, saved by grace through faith alone and the work and person of Jesus Christ alone. And that's the only way you're kept. Okay. This faith alone that saves, but the faith that saves is never found alone. So who receives each seal and why? The Holy Spirit seal of God has the quote again, individual Christians when they come to believe, and its purpose is to provide assurance of belonging to Christ as the guarantee of their inheritance, the evangelicals were absolutely right. And that's good news. Should not be underplayed. Okay. And that matters to each individual Christians. That's of paramount importance, right? If you're not one of the end times Christians, if, you're, if the end times is not happening in your lifetime, that's of critical importance to you, okay? The end times seal of God, it happens to believers during the end times. The result of their faith in Jesus is made manifest in obedience to the commandments of God as a result of their salvation. And its pur purpose is to provide protection during the end times so that harm, you know, uh, Excuse me, rephrase that. Its purpose is to provide protection during the end times so that um, harm does not come to them and harm only comes to those who do not have the seal. Okay. So, two different seals, two different Christian recipients, right? Uh, all true Christians receive the Holy Spirit seal of God. Right, um, and and um, you know both sides are right. Okay, I don't know if I'm making much sense here. Both sides are right. Okay, just in the end times when the Adventists say you know the seal of God is is obedience to the Ten Commandments and settling into the truth and keeping all Ten Commandments, they're not wrong. Okay, they are correct about that. Okay, when the evangelicals say, no, no, the Holy Spirit is the seal of God, they're not wrong. They are correct about that. Okay, they're both right. They're just right under different circumstances. Okay, and, you know, anyway, that's the point I wanted to make. And, um, you know, I hope that helps clarify some things. I hope I didn't stumble under stumble over my feet too much and um i guess that's it for now you know uh, like if you like it leave a comment you know constructive criticism would be really helpful share i guess if it's worth sharing and uh, subscribe you know it'd be helpful all right guys thank you appreciate it